the Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Oh. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine. Every day, millions of women all over America serve parquet margarine because it tastes so good. To market, to market, to get some parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You like it, you love it, like millions who say. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Their favorite margarine is parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y, it's wonderful. There's a well-known problem in the Gildersleeve household. If it isn't Leroy running through the house, it's Leroy running up the stairs. Oh, Leroy, take it easy. And it's always Leroy running through his shoes, which is quite a running problem to the great Gildersleeve. Bank statements. Hate them. Look at this. Every other check. Shoes for Leroy. Shoes for Leroy. Leroy. Come down here. You call me up. And don't run. (laughs) What's up, Bunk? Leroy, you've been running through too many pairs of shoes. What happens to them? Gosh, I'm on my feet a lot, Unc. Well, try to sit down more often like I do. Let me see those soles. Oh, for goodness sake. How do you do it, Leroy? No brakes on my bicycle. (laughs) What am I going to do with you, young man? Buy me a new bike? No. We're going down to Hogan Brothers in the morning and buy you a new pair of shoes with pig iron soles. If you're going to run through the house like a horse, you might as well look like one. Why isn't that boy ready? Keep me waiting like this. Here it is, nearly nine o'clock. Why didn't he wash his feet last night? He knows very well that... Leroy! I'm coming. Not so loud, huh? Well, get a move on. Why are you tiptoeing? You said to take it easy on the shoes. It's a little late for that pair. Look at those toes. Like blown-out firecrackers. Take it easy, Unc. You might wake Marge. She's still asleep. And since when have you become so interested in your sister's sleep? Shh. Don't go shushing me in my own house. What is this? Leroy, don't you leave. Oh, Unc, see? You woke her up. Leroy Forrester, don't you dare try to sneak out of the house without asking for it first. Good morning, Uncle Mort. Uh, good morning, my dear. Who's sneaking out? Just trying to let you get your beauty sleep. Why don't you sleep till noon, Marge? And don't try to be funny. Ask him for it now. What is this? I'll ask him on the way downtown. Uh, See you later, Marge. Leroy Forrester, you ask him for it now. Yes, Leroy, for goodness sake, ask me. Go on, I want my dollar eighty. Your dollar eighty? He's been borrowing nickels and dimes from me long enough. He never pays them back, the little weasel. Little young man? And I just, I just have to get those new Ken Carson records. Ask him, Leroy, I want my money. Well... Can I have my October allowance, Unc? Your October allowance? If you remember correctly, I just gave you your November allowance. (laughs) Okay, my December allowance. Leroy, you're up to your ears in debt again. What are we going to do with you? Well, you can't throw me into prison. I learned that in school. He used to control a guy in debtor's prison, but Miss Goodwin says that... No one has any intention of throwing you into prison. Have you, Marjorie? No. But you must learn to pay your debts. Why, if they can't throw you into prison? That's not the proper attitude, young man. How do you ever expect to get any place in this world if you can't borrow money? Borrow and pay back. Borrow and pay back. That's the American way of life. You know that. And you can't expect to borrow without credit. What about my money, Uncle Mort? Huh? Oh, yes. Here you are, my dear. December, Leroy. (laughs) Thanks, Anki. How about thanking me? All the dirty things to do, attaching a guy's allowance. Holy cow, now I won't have any money till Christmas. Hey, Unc, how about raising my allowance a buck so I won't always be embarrassing my relatives? I'll do no such thing. If you want more money, you can earn it. Gosh, probably I'll have to sell papers. 
Standing around on a drafty old street corner. A lot of big men started their fortunes selling newspapers. It's a very honorable profession for boys. Hard work, small pay, long hours, but honorable. Okay, Unc, you've convinced me. Good. I'll take better care of the money you give me. You bet you will. You'll take your responsibilities more seriously. You can't go around borrowing money with no intention of paying it back. Good credit is money in the bank, Leroy. Remember that. Look at me. I don't owe a man in this whole town. And I can go to any of my friends and borrow a hundred dollars any time I want it. A hundred dollars? Certainly. A hundred dollars. Or more. Well, I could. Now, who's that? Well, good morning, Gildy. Hello, Leroy. Hi. Judge, you're just the man I want to see. Loan me a hundred dollars. What? Loan me a hundred dollars. You're a friend of mine, Horace. One hundred dollars? Where are you going? Goodbye. Oh. Credit slipping, huh? It is not. Come back here, Horace. Horace, old pal, come back. What's the idea of running off like that? What's the idea of frightening me like that? What do you need a hundred dollars for, for heaven's sake? Well, I if, if I ask for it, it must be important. I'll say. Leroy, you stay out of this. And you may go upstairs. What for? Well, wash your hands. To go get a pair of shoes? Yes. The judge and I want to have a little talk. <laughs> oh, for corn's sake. I'm sorry if I embarrassed you in front of your nephew, Gilday, but a hundred dollars. Forget it, Judge. Just write me a check before Leroy comes back, and I'll explain later. Not so fast, Gilday. I'm sorry if you're in financial difficulty, but if you can't make both ends meet, get into something that pays instead of collecting your little dole from the city. I resent that, Hooker. If I've told you once, I've told you a hundred times, you're just vegetating in the water department. You're becoming a big, fat water lily. <laughs> Listen, you old goat. Now, Gildy. Will you try to listen for a minute? Horace, I'm only doing this for Leroy's benefit. For Leroy's benefit? Well, you make a touching appeal, Gildy. But... Oh, for goodness sake. Come on, Leroy. We're going downtown. Leroy, what's holding you up now? I'm washing my hands. What for? We're just going down to get some shoes. Uh, that boy. Miss Gildy. Miss Gildy, are you leaving now? Yes, Bertie. What is it? Nothing except this is grocery day. Good morning, Judge. Good morning, Bertie. Beautiful morning. He sure is, Judge. Grocery day, Mr. Gilsey. What? Uh, didn't I give you this week's grocery money, Bertie? Yes, sir, but we bought that ham, you know, and when you buy ham these days, you're dealing in high finance. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, how much, Bertie? Well, we're out of eggs. You and Leroy ate the last half a dozen this morning. <laughs> <laughs> and then we need sugar and coffee and potatoes. You want to see the list? No, no. How much, Bertie? Well, twenty dollars ought to do it. Well, see you later, Gilda. You needn't rush away, Judge. I've got grocery money. Step along, Leroy. I've got other things to do today. Oh, gosh, Uncle, if you haven't got time, why don't you let me pick out my own shoes? This thing needs supervision, young man. Kid. You're still a little boy, even if you do have a man-sized foot. I'll bring back the change, honest. Well, you have to learn how to take care of money sometime, I guess. Uh, gave Bertie all my big bills. Come along, Leroy. I'll have to go down to the bank and get some money anyway. Way down there and back? Can't you borrow it from one of your friends? Leroy. All your friends aren't like Judge Hooker, are they? Judge Hooker is no longer a friend. There's Mr. Munson in his barber shop. He's a friend of yours. Well, yes, yes, he is. And if we're in a hurry... All right, come on, Leroy. The trouble with you is that you always have to be shown. Hi, Commish. Wondered if you were coming in. Morning, Floyd. Leroy, how they going? Swell. Well, what'll it be? Haircut, Commish? Hop right up. No, not today, Floyd. Shave for Leroy? <laughs> <laughs> well, what can I do for you? Well, uh... Floyd, we just dropped in to, uh, uh... You want me to ask him? I'll handle this. Uh, Floyd, how much money do you have in the till? Well, let me see. It just opened up. Chief Gates was in for a haircut and a shave. Cut him. Chief has a bad mole, ugly place right on his face. Come on, Floyd. How much do you have? Well, a haircut and a shave's only a buck and a quarter. No tip. Cut him. <laughs> That's not enough. How much do you have under the towels? 
Under the towels? I know you keep the big stuff under the towels, Floyd. All barbers do. Let's see it. Why? Gee, have you got $100 under there, Mr. Munson? <laughs> yes, Floyd. Let me have $100. $100? Kidding, huh? Aren't you? <laughs> no, I'm not, Floyd. You're a friend of mine, a fellow jolly boy. Lend me $100. Commissioner, if I had 100 clams, I wouldn't be cutting hair. I'd skip town so fast nobody would know which way I went. I... Say, you're not thinking of... Don't be ridiculous, Floyd, and stop beating around the bush. I have to get down to Hogan Brothers. Oh? That little secretary of yours putting a squeeze on you for another dress? <laughs> no, Floyd. Can't squeeze the secretary without getting squeezed right back, huh, Commissioner? <laughs> Now, see here, Floyd, that was a misunderstanding, and you know it. Well, what are we talking about now? We're talking about money, Floyd. Let's see what's in the bag. What bag? The bag under the towels. Oh, that. That's my lunch. Your lunch? Let me see. Now, just a minute, Commish. I... Uh-huh. What kind of a lunch is that, Floyd? Bologna sandwiches. Bologna is right. <laughs> Fine friends you are. You can't even tell the truth. Well, you haven't told me anything. Why do you want the dough? Did you lose your job? May it to will fire you it's again? It's none of your business what I want the money for. Okay, have it your way. But you can't expect to come in and put the sleeve on a guy without telling him why. Oh, come on, Unc. We're not going to get any shoes this way. Shoes? Hey, just a minute, Commish. If it's a matter of keeping the kid in shoes, why... Oh, here's the... that's not the idea. I'm just trying to establish Leroy's credit. Come on, Leroy. <laughs> We'll be back with a great Gildersleeve in just a minute. The other day, in my capacity as the parquet reporter, I had a very interesting conversation with Judge Hooker. It all started when I said, Judge, what do you think... Think of parquet? Well, son, I'll tell you. Parquet is my favorite spread for bread. Yes, sir. I think parquet is above par and okay. <laughs> uh, yes, Judge, but what do you think about... Think about the vitamin content? Well, I'll tell you. I think the fact that parquet contains 15,000 units of vitamin A per pound is mighty important to every housewife. And what about the... The qu quality? I know it's made by Kraft, and that's all I need to know. If it's a Kraft product, it's a quality product. I know parquet is good. Well, how about the, the co cost of parquet? Why, son, parquet is a real money saver. Now that food prices are so high, parquet is certainly easy on the food budget. Look, Judge, why do you buy parquet? I buy parquet because it tastes so good. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Parquet does taste good. After all, millions of women all over America serve parquet, the craft quality margarine for that very reason. Try parquet margarine. P-A-R-K-A-Y. It's wonderful. <laughs> times in its history, the Summerfield Telephone Exchange has been swamped. That time in 1922 when the glue factory blew up. The time Orson Welles broadcast from Mars. And the time Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve tried to borrow a hundred dollars to teach his nephew a lesson in credit. That's today. I heard about it in the barber shop. Nobody seems to know how he went broke, but... It's the most pitiful thing, Agnes. Borrowing money to buy shoes for his family. Our own water commissioner. I stopped by this morning to give him a ride downtown, and he tried to hit me up for a hundred dollars. The man needs help, Chief. <laughs> Yeah, okay, I'll tell him your phone, Chief Gates. Yeah, I'll tell him his credit's always good with you, huh? Okay, so long, Chief. What's this, Leroy? Oh, oh, hi, Unc. You home? What's this about my credit? That was Chief Gates. He said he'd been talking to Judge Hooker, and if you needed money, why didn't you come to him? Money? What's Hooker been up to now? Gosh, I wish I had credit like you. Didn't think you could do it, Unc. <laughs> yes, well, no matter, just so you've learned your lesson, my boy. The important thing is pay your debts promptly when due. And you'll always have good credit like I have. Now, you've sure got it, Unc. They've been calling all afternoon. 
phone. Oh, who's been calling? People trying to lend you money. What is this, Leroy? Not much. Five dollars, ten dollars, some twenty. What? Oh, boy, there's another one. I'll get it. Leroy, come back here. I'll get it. How did this get around town? Try to teach a child a lesson and... Hello. Yes, this is Mr. Gildersleeve. Dr. Pettibone. <laughs> no, thanks, doctor. I don't need any. Don't know how it ever got around. <laughs> rumors. Idle rumors. Yes, I'm sure. Goodbye. <laughs> Dr. Pettibone, huh? He called before. Well, he won't call again, and nobody else had better call. <laughs> Let me get this one up. Never mind. I've got it. Hello? Yes? No. Goodbye. Confound it. Who was that, Unc? I don't know. A lot of them said they were going to call back. That's what they think. What are you going to do, Unc? Operator? Operator? Hello? I want to be disconnected. Yes, this is Mr. Gildersleeve. Don't be sorry. Just disconnect the telephone. Stop everything. Terminate the service. No more calls, do you hear? That's an order. How do these things happen? Why don't you go in and sit down, Unc? You've had a tough day. Yes, yes, I have. I will. Zook. <laughs> Hello, Leroy. Hello, Uncle Mort. Hi, Marge. Hey, you should have been here. A lot's been going on. I know what's been going on, Leroy. Do you mind if I talk to Uncle Mort alone for a few minutes? Sure, I was just going. Well, Marjorie? You poor old dear. Huh? Why didn't you tell me, Unky? Best to uh, tell you what. I just want you to know that I'll do anything to help. And here's the dollar, lady. I didn't get the records. Now, see here, Marjorie. What have you heard? I wish I'd heard it from you rather than from the outside. Unky, I'll skimp. I'll go without. Skimp? Oh, for goodness sake. There'll be no skimping nor going without around here. Marjorie, sit down. I have to talk to you. Uh, little Marjorie. Poor old Unky. Borrowing money on the street. Marjorie! <laughs> Marjorie, I want you to listen to me. Now stop that crying. Here, dry your eyes. There's nothing to be upset about, my dear. It was all a misunderstanding. Horrible mistake. Your old uncle has plenty of money. Well, enough anyway. You and Leroy will always have the best that money can buy. Is that clear? Yes, Unky. Well, now go upstairs, my dear, and compose yourself. I'm home, Mr. Gildersleeve. Come out and see the roast beef. I got a lot of groceries. Huh? Oh, hello, Bertie. But you know something that man down at the grocery store wouldn't let me pay for him? What? He said he understands. <laughs> said take as long as you want to pay. Oh, Unky, you're being so noble. Bertie. Oh. Marjorie, come back here. Bertie. What's the matter with her? What's the matter with everybody around here? I don't know, but that grocery man, he's crazy. That's what he is. He wouldn't take no money. Well, he will take it. No, sir, he won't. I kept fanning him with that $20 bill, and all he said was he understood. <laughs> well, he doesn't understand. Bertie, you take that money back to him. Well, just as you say, Mr. Gilsey, but I wouldn't be looking no gift horse in the mouth, not at these prices. <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. How do I go about straightening this thing out? Put an ad in the newspaper? Uh, the paper probably wouldn't take my money. <laughs> Telephone, Bertie. Telephone? I'll get it. No, I'll get it. I thought I told that operator. Mr. Gildersleeve? Operator, I told you to discontinue our service. We did, Mr. Gildersleeve, but one of your friends had your service reinstated and asked us to send the bill to him. Who did that? Oh, he said he preferred to remain anonymous. Oh! Peavy's Pharmacy. Oh, hello, Judge. No, I haven't seen him around today. A hundred dollars. You don't say. No, he hasn't asked me yet. Well, I'll be watching up, uh, watching for him. Uh oh, I'll talk to you later, Judge. Uh, uh, hello, Peavy. Well, hello, Mister Gildersleeve. What can I do for? It's a fine day, isn't it? Mm. 
Peavy, it's mighty good to see you. It is? This is the one place a man can come when things aren't going right. You're always happy to see a person drop in. Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> yes, sir, it's always good to come in here and talk to a real friend. By George, we've been pretty close, Peavy. You and I always have been able to talk about our personal problems. Well, up to a point. And we don't want to talk about them, we don't. Peavy, we're not going to talk about money, are we? Oh, no, Mr. Gildersleeve. As a matter of fact, I'd rather we didn't. Huh? But I, I want you to know that if you ever need anything in the way of pharmaceutical preparations, just come in and I'll be glad to put it on the books. See? You too, Peavy. Oh, it's just a friendly gesture, you understand. I wouldn't want it to get around to the rest of my trade. Don't worry, Peavy. Now get this straight about my finances once and for all, will you? Well, hello, Eve. Hello, Throckmorton. How nice to see you. Hello, Mr. Peavy. Yeah, hello, Miss Goodwin. Eve, it's good to see you. Have a Coke. A great big Coke. Well, I don't... Peavy, two large Cokes. Two large Cokes, Mr. Gildersleeve? The large ones are ten, the small ones are five. <laughs> you heard me, Peavy. Two large Cokes. Uh, I think I'd rather have a small one, Throckmorton. Yes, Cokes are very filling. Two large Cokes, Peavy. Who's doing the ordering? I really couldn't drink a large one. Two small Cokes coming up. What? <laughs> Two large Cokes, Peavy. Confound it. Uh, well, uh, one large Coke with two straws. A lot of people are drinking that way now. I... S well, have it your own way, Peavy. One large Coke... With two straws. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Throckmorton, you're still a schoolboy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> By George Eve, this is wonderful. Let's step out tonight. I've had a hard day. Feel like doing the town. Well, I was going to the library. Library? Let's have dinner at the Sky Room, Eve. Much noisier. What the heck? Oh, that sounds wonderful, Throckmorton. The sky room, you say? I wouldn't be carried away, Mr. Gildersleeve. What business is this of yours, Peavy? Just speaking as a friend. Pardon me. Yes, yes. Well, here you are, Peavy. No, let the coats be on me, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, well, thank you, Mr. Peavy. What is this? It's a pleasure, Miss Goodwin. Uh, quite a rich bill of fare at the sky room, as I remember. Took Mrs. Peavy there on our wedding anniversary. Skipped two of the courses, and it still cost me nerves. Peavy, I'm not interested in the cost. Well, then I can't feel very sorry for you. <laughs> I don't want you to feel sorry for me, you or anybody else. Uh, uh, please, Throckmorton, perhaps I should go to the library tonight. But, Eve, what about our dinner? Uh, well, if you insist. But why don't we just go to the tea room? We've always enjoyed it there. Yes, that's a sensible idea. She's... Why don't you take her to dinner, Peavy? I'm not hungry. I'll call you later, Eve. Well, Throckmorton, where are you going? I feel so bad I may even go to the office and work. Fine state of affairs that a man can't talk to a friend without being offered money. It's humiliating. I'll lock myself in the office. They'll never think to call me there. Hey, Gildersleeve. Wait a minute, Gildy. Oh, Hooker. I've been looking all over for you. I've got great news. Your troubles are over. Hooker, what do you mean by spreading this malicious gossip all over town? Are you trying to ruin my reputation? I bring you glad tidings, Gildy. Out of the way, Benedict Arnold. <laughs> the mayor's in his office and he wants to see you. The mayor? Did you tell him to? I didn't tell him a thing. But you'd better stop in and see him. I understand he has a pleasant surprise for you. I don't want any charity from Mayor Terwilliger or anybody else. Who said anything about charity? Stop in and see him. All right. I will. And I'll tell him. Terwilliger? Well, Gildersleeve, come in, come in. I have something here that will be of interest to you. Well, I don't want it. And I want you and everybody else to know that I don't need money. I wouldn't accept a penny. This is astonishing. Why do you say that, Gildersleeve? Because I have money. Money in my pocket. Money in the bank. A war bond. Insurance. My house is paid for, practically. I don't need any money. Well, I, I don't understand your attitude, Gildersleeve, but I do admire it. 
And I appreciate your being down here on Saturday afternoon, too, attending to business like I am. And why do we do it, Gildersleeve? Not for money. For the good of our fair city. Ah. <laughs> uh, oh, yes, yes. Uh, well, Gildersleeve, you've robbed me of a great pleasure this afternoon, but I'm proud of you. It was to be my pleasant duty to report that at last week's council meeting, we voted a rather substantial raise for you. Raise? Yeah. But uh, if you won't take the money, we'll divert it into some other use. Oh, me, me. <laughs> Yes, this is a big thing you're doing, Gildersleeve, and I know it'll give you great satisfaction to see me tear up this check. Oh, but Mr. Mayor... Uh, what did you say, Gildersleeve? He... <laughs> We'll see very shortly whether the great Gildersleeve can bounce back from that one. Every day, millions of women all over America serve parquet margarine because it tastes so good. Try it soon. Discover for yourself how good parquet tastes when you spread it on bread, toast, and rolls. It's true. Every day, millions of women all over America serve parquet margarine because it tastes so good. Look first for the margarine of craft quality. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. To market, to market, to get some parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You like it, you love it, like millions who say. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Their favorite margarine is Parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y, it's wonderful. Special delivery. Oh? Oh, thank you, Bertie. Must be important. Special delivery on Sunday. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll see. Uh, from Mayor Terwilliger. Why is he writing me? Uh, uh, dear Gildersleeve, I have given the matter of your raise additional thought, and I'm enclosing a check to cover the increase, which is retroactive from September the 1st. Well... Rather than call a special meeting of the council to retract the appropriation, I find it'll be less costly to the city if you accept the money. Oh, how much is it? With less withholding tax, less Social Security, less 1948 campaign contribution. Pay to Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve $4.13. <laughs> what a raise to Willigert's. A good thing it's Sunday or I'd go down and tear up this check in his face. But I'll be cooled off by Monday. 4.13. <laughs> good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It was written by John Elliott and Andy White with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Louise Erickson, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Wald saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Good night. Listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> If you're keeping a sharp eye on your food budget these days, here's an economical way to make leftovers taste extra good. Pour a rich golden Pabstet cheese sauce over leftovers of meat, chicken, vegetables, or fish. Presto, leftovers taste better than ever. Pabstet cheese food is a grand treat in snacks and sandwiches, too. And it's doubly delicious served with fruit or pie for dessert. Get Pabstet tomorrow in golden cheddar or pimento varieties. Ask for P-A-B-S-T hyphen E-T-T. Pabstet Cheese Food. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.